We're going to talk about Kate's new book, Revealing Arithmetic. It's not a standalone curriculum. It's more of a teacher's companion. They could use this with any curriculum. Giving ideas to parents to help their child as they're struggling with concepts, to help them bring in that biblical worldview, to help take math out of the textbook and show your child, like, why am I learning what I'm learning, right? And so children should be leaving their math lesson for the day going, wow, God is amazing. He is so faithful. I can trust him and not just overwhelmed by the math. We're going to talk about Kate's new book, Revealing Arithmetic. And this actually isn't a new book, I don't think, but it is updated and revised. Um, can you tell us a little bit, Kate, about this project and, and what the heart behind it is? Sure. Um, well, the heart behind it is to really help parents as they're teaching elementary math, so from pre-K up through grade six to really be able to show their child why they're learning what they're learning and how it's really proclaiming God's praises. Because a lot of times, I was homeschooled, was brought up in a Christian homeschooling family. Um, we were blessed to use a lot of master books resources, but I still didn't see math itself as something biblical. I just kind of saw it as something you, you solve the problem, you add, you subtract. This is how you add. This is how you subtract. And I didn't know why all that worked. And I was left thinking of math as something just like man-made and pretty amazing. And so it was subtly teaching me that, hey, I can trust man and I can trust math. As opposed to when we understand that when we add on paper, it's just describing a real life consistency that God created and that he sustains. And there are different ways that you can add on paper. It doesn't have to be done. The step by step process that we typically use today, that's just one way to describe those consistencies. But it's working because day in and day out, God is governing all things so consistently and so predictably that we can call it a fact that one plus one is going to equal two. And so children should be leaving their math lesson for the day going, wow, God is amazing. He is so faithful. I can trust him and not just overwhelmed by the math. Um, and so that's that was the heart behind really writing on math and, and the revealing arithmetic was to give, give parents those tools and those ideas. So it's arranged by concept. It's designed to go alongside a curriculum and kind of be like a travel agent, giving ideas to parents to help their child as they're struggling with concepts, to help them bring in that biblical worldview, to help take math out of the textbook and show your child like, why am I learning what I'm learning, right? And so it's arranged by concepts. So whatever concept they were teaching, so if they're teaching multiplication, they go to the, one of the multiplication chapters and it'll give the biblical worldview for the parent. And then it'll give bulleted out ideas that they can then take and use with their child as they're teaching that concept. Okay, and would a child use this at all? Like if you were going through, um, maybe even at the point where you were going through algebra and just needed some basic review of how to do fractions or something like that? Absolutely, so an older child, so I, I say it's written for the parent because it's gonna talk about like when you teach your child, this is things to keep in mind, but an older child who's already had some exposure to the concept can certainly go and read it and kind of gain that worldview themselves. And there's also some worksheets in there um, that can be used with children as you're going through it, as well as with the older children who are reviewing it. Okay. Um, the thing is, the, the reason why I wouldn't say like, it's not for someone who's first learning multiplication, for example, to just sit down and read, because that multiplication chapter is gonna cover a lot of different aspects of multiplication that are typically taught little by little by little by little, right? So gotcha. if your child is first learning that concept, you might be able to spot read some sections to them, right? But you're not gonna like read the entire chapter. Gotcha. Okay, so you wouldn't, that's, it would, it's not a standalone curriculum. It's more of a teacher's companion, um, like really any curriculum, they could use this with any curriculum. Yeah. And if they came across a concept that maybe you haven't, like for me, as I'm teaching my son, I haven't done, mixed numbers or fractions in 30 years, um, it would just be a really good resource to be able to pull that out and brush up and and kind of get the review. Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, if you were a really creative parent who wanted to add their own worksheets and stuff, you could turn it into a curriculum, but that's not how it's designed. It's designed to really go alongside one and help you 
kind of just like what you were talking about. So I'm, I'm at this concept, I'm not getting it, or my child's not getting, you know, like, how do I, how do I really bring this concept to life? And you can just look at the book and get, get ideas there. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you and I came into the press about the same time. I came in as the VP of marketing and you came in as an author. And one of my first projects was marketing principles of mathematics one. And um, even though I went to a private school and grew up in a Christian home and have homeschooled for at that time, you know, 20 years, probably um, I, I still had math as a separate subject. And uh, you were the first one to kind of introduce that the consistency in math, the language that God uses to bring order to everything around us, um, the, the fact that I can trust two plus two equals four is reliable because its creator is so uh, faithful. And in that consistency that I find in math gives me something to hold on to in my relationship with him. So I think revealing arithmetic is, is a really cool project because you incorporate so much of that to help a parent, no matter what curriculum they're using for math, they can bring that biblical worldview that we really love in principles of math one, principles of math two, the new algebra two, um, into their math curriculum. Yes, yes. And it really, um, you know, it makes such a difference when we realize how faithful God is because it, it gets at our pride. It makes us realize we have to trust him. We have to trust his word. It makes us, it should bring us tremendous peace if our faith is in Christ Jesus, because we know he's in charge of like everything. And every time like a child solves a multiplication problem and they get that, they see that three times five still equals 15. It's like shouting out that God is still faithful. He's still on his throne. It doesn't matter if it was a good day or a bad day. He's still in charge. You know, he is still operating so consistently. There's a verse in, in Jeremiah that I like to share. Jeremiah 33, 25 through 26. It says, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant. So God is saying, you know, look around at the day and the night and, and the ordinances. Another a version translates that fixed laws. It's like those consistencies, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, the consistencies of creation. He's pointing to that and saying, look, I'm a covenant keeping God. I'm going to keep my covenant um, here, too. And so math is shouting out at us that we have a faithful God who keeps his word. So we need to pay attention to everything he said in his word. And it's very exciting with throughout revealing arithmetic. Um, I point out to parents how they really have an opportunity as they're teaching these different math concepts to give the gospel to their child, to show them, hey, you know, God means business. <laughs> He's the one who established these orders and the consistencies that we're describing here. And he keeps his word. And so we need to pay attention to what that word has said. That's awesome. And the, one of the reviews in the back is um, by a, uh, an, an adjunct instructor at Antion Bible College. And she said, Revealing Arithmetic is a spectacular book. It will be required reading for all of my math ed students. Are there... Is there a university that uses this as a resource to train teachers? Um, yes. And that one, I think, was from Jay Ott. Is that the correct name on there? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I, he had written that a long time ago. It's been used by Liberty University um, in one of their courses for a while as well. Um, so, yeah, the Liberty is the one that I see the orders come in consistently for. So, but, yeah, it is used to train elementary school teachers how to teach math. Awesome. So this is, if you are, um, well, one more thing to touch on. You also created some courses in the academy at masterbooksacademy.com. What would, what, what did those courses do? Like, how would that help me as a parent if, if I were using this resource? So in the courses, um, I actually pull out like manipulative and, and demonstrate teaching the different concepts. So it brings in a little bit more than you can do in a written form. So you can actually like watch me grab, um, I have like a pile of stones and we just walk through ideas. Um, so a lot of the material is similar to what you find in the book, but if you have the videos, you're actually getting to see it like demonstrated and talked through different ideas of how you could implement um, the suggestions in the book. And then you would take the book and use that as you're actually sitting down to teach to remind yourself or to pull out the worksheet that's in the book or look at the more details in the bulleted out ideas. But the videos were designed so that a busy parent could just like sit down, get the overview of the concept, feel equipped and prepared then 
as they're teaching that. And okay. older students, you know, older students, again, could watch the videos. There are sections of the videos that um, they might be able to just show to their younger child as well, um, depending on the particular child. Every curriculum teaches things in different orders. And so that's the other thing with the videos that a parent would want to make sure that their child's ready for that particular video because their curriculum might be going in a different order um, than somebody else. But, um, but yeah, it, it just really demonstrates it in a more visual auditory way than the book can. And then as I was going through the book, I see that you also use like there's different methods or styles that they use in, in mathematics. And so you give different examples of some of the um, techniques that are used to come to the answers as well. So it's not just one way if there were other techniques, I guess, is that what you would call their methods? To yeah, yeah. And that's, um, that was something that was really fascinating to me when I first started researching math, because I had been brought up, you know, you carry your tens digits, this is how you multiply, this is how you add, this is how you subtract. And I equated that method with the consistency itself. All right. And which case you're left kind of thinking, hey, man, is the one who's causing all this to work, right? And really not fully understanding, you're just memorizing these rules. Okay, step one, I do this, step two, I do this, step three, I do that, right? And so one of the things in revealing arithmetic um, is to look at some other methods, not for the purpose of actually like learning them or mastering them, but just to be aware that our modern method and those step-by-step -step processes we follow is just one way to keep track of place value so that we can use a limited set of facts that we can memorize, because we can't memorize every addition we ever need to perform, right? We're, we're not God, we're limited in what we can do. Right. But we can memorize up to a certain point. And then that step-by-step -step process helps us use that limited set of facts to solve other problems. So what Revealing Arithmetic does is show, okay, so demonstrating that so the child's understanding, okay, we got this problem, we got to add and we can't memorize everything. So how could we actually do that on paper? Here's one way. And then looks at other ways as well not again not to master them um but to just make the child aware hey there's different ways that men using their god-given ability and creativity have come up with to explore creation and in fact when math was first switching over to paper math every math book had a different way to multiply <laughs> and there was some fierce competition over which way would become like the standard way which is the way that we typically use today but one thing along those lines that i have show them how to do is make a simple abacus out of an old picture frame because before paper was readily available, you did your arithmetic on an abacus. And it's a really easy visual to show place value because each bead here, when you move it over, it represents a single quantity. Each bead here represents a set of 10. And so you can easily, so like this would be 11, 110 and 11. And showing it this way can then help translate um, to what we're doing on paper uh, as, as we work with numbers. And again, can, can reinforce in a very simple way that our way of doing it on paper is just one way to, to approach the problem. And I'm very cautious in there to, to warn parents too. You know, you don't wanna show like a gazillion different ways when they're first learning one method, obviously. The point is not to confuse them. But so the ideas are interspersed um, so that as the child progresses and is able to look at different ones, um, they can. But from the beginning, they can do something simple like an abacus that will show them, hey, there are other ways to approach this problem. Yeah. Well, with our writing strand series, we get feedback quite often from people who buy the teaching companion and will say, if you buy nothing else, buy the teaching companion because it will give you such valuable resources for teaching writing. And I think that this is another one of those projects where um, for any homeschool parent, this is such a valuable tool to be able to come alongside and just give you a resource to be quick to look at and and get the information. But also, I'd have to say there's some mind blown um, moments. You know, math was not my favorite subject um, at all. And um, but as I was going through this, I was I came to the, the first chapter or one of the first chapters on counting mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm looking at this chart and I really had a mind blown moment. And I know that this is probably so basic and, and hard to believe, but you know, you talk about exponents, extraction of roots, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, that that's all just counting, methods of counting. And, mm -hmm. and like that concept 
like my brain did a whole rewire the moment I read that. And I think that this book is full of, of these little, wow, mind blown moments as you go through and see the connections that you've made. So um, thank you for sharing this project with us. And I think it's going to be an invaluable tool for a lot of families and a lot of students who just need a little bit extra handholding. Um, same with the Academy courses. The Academy courses are available at masterbooksacademy.com and definitely an asset that I think would be valuable uh, for almost any homeschool, especially if you have, well, this would be ideal for almost any age, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, ideally, uh, the parent would get it and use it while they're teaching pre-K through grade six. But if you're already past that point and you've got someone in a higher grade, everything builds on itself. So like that picture you're referring to shows counting at the bottom and then all these other concepts building on top of it. Because really in math, you're just continuing to build and build and build. And I hear from people all the time who are um, struggling you know, later on and it's because they missed something earlier. So if, if your child is struggling in fractions, well, algebra, you're using fractions all over the place. And so if, if they get to algebra and all of a sudden they, they don't get it, it could be that they didn't get fractions. And so it can be really helpful to fill in those gaps if you have an older student that's struggling in an area of math to be able to go back and go, oh, that's what this was all about. Or even if they just, so a lot of kids will just learn to, plug and go, like they know how to plug it into the problem and get the answer, right? And that works until you get to upper math where you really have to understand and think more critically. Mm -hmm. And so if they didn't learn to do that at the elementary level, now they're trying to learn how to do it with all these letters and they're really lost, right? So it can be a useful thing to like go back and show them what was really going on from the beginning so that they have that understanding of math really being a way of exploring God's creation. and figuring out, okay, how are we gonna solve this problem and that problem and that problem? And they're not just seeing it as this textbook exercise that they just plug and go with. Awesome, awesome.